Saturday, Monday after the ITV Lunchtime News Now. Good afternoon, I'm Mark McQuillan. In the past few minutes, the launch of a rocket aimed at starting a new era of space exploration has been postponed. The Artemis project, which aims to return humans to the moon, was due to begin its first test flight in Florida. Thousands of people had gathered for the launch, which was due to happen about 10 minutes ago. But technical problems meant it had to be pushed back. Alex Isat has the latest. As the world watches on, waiting for the launch of Artemis 1, NASA has called a time on its mission. The space shuttle will go ahead next month, and it's one mission to transport people further into space than ever before. This is a test craft. For now, there's no crew on board. But if the 42-day mission is successful, it will be used to fly humans back to the moon. It is the, the safest spacecraft for humans ever created for our astronauts. It will go farther than we've ever gone before on Artemis 1, uh, 40,000 miles beyond the moon, and we are super excited to see how it perform. Thunderstorms delayed the Florida launch initially, and then a fuel leak pushed it back further. This morning, engineers worked on a suspected crack in the space launch system. The countdown clock was held while technical issues were discussed. The system is the most powerful vehicle ever to be developed by NASA, but the cost of the program has been called into question. And I know people say this is expensive. Maybe that money could be used elsewhere. But I think the value we get out of that, scientific value, geopolitical value, but also the inspiration that the space program prov provides for kids in this country and around the world, and I think is worth every penny. After a loop around the moon, the shuttle is expected to splash in the Pacific Ocean in six weeks' time. A first step in a giant leap for space exploration. Alex Isaac, ITV News. Supporters of Liz Truss are not ruling out a major cut to VAT if she becomes Prime Minister next week. Some reports suggest she's considering reducing the tax by 10% to help ease the cost of living crisis. Our political correspondent Libby Vina is here. So Libby, how likely is it we'll see a cut in VAT? Well, all we've heard on the record from Liz Truss is that she would reverse the national insurance rise and cut green levies from our energy bills. But the fact is, since this leadership contest began in July, many weeks ago, the energy crisis has worsened uh, with... Uh, the prediction now that we are going to see a rise of nearly 80% in our energy bills from October. And so the idea that uh, what she's announced so far would be sufficient, I think that has gone out the window. Uh, the, the concept of actually cutting taxes, I think, sits much more comfortably with her philosophy. Uh, she's had a, a talked a, a lot about her aversion to handouts, as she calls them. Uh, the fact is, though, that um, Rishi Sunak's camp have been pointing out that the one problem with cutting VAT, of course, is that it doesn't apply to one very big item of expenditure, particularly for poor people, and that is food. And therefore, this would be a very regressive measure. That said, Rishi Sunak, of course, has uh, offered to cut people's VAT on their energy bills. I think, nevertheless, uh, she will get a sympathetic hearing from businesses who are extremely concerned about what the energy price rises mean for them. They don't have a cap at all. And today, a group of uh, uh, representing takeaway businesses uh, has said that they do want to see an immediate cut to VAT. Libby, thanks very much. The Queen has sent a message to the President of Pakistan after floods which have claimed more than a thousand lives. In her communication to Arif Alvi, the Queen said she is deeply saddened by the loss of life and destruction. The country has seen unprecedented monsoon rains this summer. The UN nuclear watchdog have sent a team to Ukraine's Zaporizhia nuclear plant. The agency's chief, Rafael Grossi, will lead the mission to the facility which will assess physical damage as well as safety. And the Royal Navy aircraft carrier HMS Prince of Wales has broken down off the south coast only one day after embarking for exercises in the US. The 65,000 ton warship left Portsmouth on Saturday before an emerging mechanical issue occurred. 
A week on from the shocking death of Olivia Pratt Corbell, Merseyside police say they've arrested 170 people as part of a crackdown on serious and organised crime. Harry Fawcett is in Liverpool for us this lunchtime. So, Harry, what have officers been telling you? Well, as you say, it was last Monday night that this crime that has so horrified this neighbourhood, this entire city, was carried out. The shooting to death inside her own home of a nine-year-old girl. And so police today have decided to demonstrate what they've been doing, not just in terms of Olivia's case, but more broadly against organised and serious crime, saying that they have carried out 170 arrests during that time. They've executed 58 warrants, seized 46 vehicles, seizing as well suspected Class A and Class B drugs. Now, among those 170 arrests were, of course, two directly linked to Olivia's case. Uh, towards the end of last week, a 36-year-old and a 30 three-year-old man separately detained both on suspicion of murder and of suspected uh, uh, also of, of attempted murder in two cases. Uh, they uh, were then released over the weekend on bail. One sent back the 36-year-old to prison on suspicion of breaching the terms of the licence under which he'd been released. And so they have also, the police, released a video appealing again for more information, not just in Olivia's case, but in two other killings that took place in the week preceding her killing, uh, saying that anyone remaining silent was essentially protecting the killers. Harry, thanks very much. Finally, Sir Andy Murray will head up the British contingent in the first round of the US Open later. The 35-year-old is returning to the tournament where he secured his maiden Grand Slam title at Flushing Meadows a decade ago. Murray faces the number 24 seed, Francisco Serendolo. That's it this lunchtime. Duncan Golastani will be here with the evening news at 6. The news where you are follows the national weather. From everyone here, goodbye.